Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. My name is Qing Gao. I'm a professor at the Columbia University School of Social Work and also the director of the Columbia China Center for Social Policy. Welcome to the first lecture this semester in our year-long annual lecture series on Chinese social policy from comparative perspectives. This lecture series is co-sponsored by the Columbia China Center for Social Policy and Weatherhead East Asian Institute and supported by the Columbia School of Social Work. Today's lecture is also co-sponsored by the Center on Poverty and Social Policy at Columbia University. So on behalf of my colleagues, Drs. Irv Garfinko and Chris Weimer, who are co-directors of the Center on Poverty and Social Policy, I'm honored and excited to introduce to you Professor Li Gan as our speaker today. Professor Li Gan is the Clifford Taylor Jr. Professor in Liberal Arts at Texas A&M University. He is a specialist in econometrics and applied microeconomics with a master's in statistics and PhD in economics from UC Berkeley. He has published widely in areas such as econometric theory, economics of aging, public economics, and Chinese economy. In 2009, Professor Gan initiated and launched the China Household Finance Survey, which he has been directing since at the Southwestern University of Finance and Economics in Chengdu, China. This ongoing survey has a nationally representative sample of over 40,000 households, and many of their findings regarding China's Gini coefficient, housing vacancy rates, household asset allocations have been reported widely, both in China and uh, elsewhere around the world. Today, we are so happy Professor Gan will share with us new findings from an earned income tax credit experiment in China and how it affected poverty and other labor market outcomes. In the US, as many of you know, the EITC has been the largest and most effective anti-poverty policies in the past 30 years or so. It was one of the major policies I learned when I first came to this country, and I always dreamed about experimenting it in China. I want to thank Professor Gan for realizing that dream for me and for many others. So now I turn it over to you, Professor Gan. Welcome. Professor Gao, thanks uh, for the uh, introduction and thanks for the invitation. So this is a joint work uh, with Xiong Fei Guo. I think uh, he is uh, in the audience today. And uh, uh, Mr. Qing He and uh, Mr. Wang Junhui, uh, they are from University of International Business Economics and the Southwestern University of Finance Economics. So basic outline, uh, first to talk about the background, the motivation. Um, and then we're gonna talk about the, our experiment, Wutong Chiao experiment, uh, design and uh, results, etc. And uh, if we have time, I will talk a little bit about the, the whole uh, transfer program, uh, the macro implication, if uh, I think this is the right time for China to start and initiate a large scale transfer program in China. <clears throat> All right, the experiment uh, conducted in Wutongqiao, uh, Lesan uh, city and the Sichuan province. Uh, Lesan is where the giant Buddha, the giant Buddha is. So the experiment, uh, this particular experiment started uh, from 2014 and last to 2017, about three years ago. It's a random assignment. Uh, there are 259 households in the sample. Uh, the treatment is uh, very similar to the uh, earned income tax credit, like those in the United States. And uh, uh, the result is pretty promising. It has increased labor, household labor supply, and obviously household earnings, and also spendings on food and education. So a little bit background. Um, for those who don't know China uh, that well, uh, China actually spent very, very little on social welfare. Uh, this is a relatively, so in the comparable data, this is cash transfer excluding 
uh, social security, excluding uh, medical, uh, ex medical insurance spending, China spent about only 0.3% of GDP versus the US 3% of the GDP in social, in transfers, uh, cash transfer, particular cash transfer. Um, so far, uh, China has nothing, has no incentive compatible programs. While uh, government officials, including the leadership has been talking about establishing uh, such a program for quite many years. They want to, they, 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 they recognize that the social welfare program needs to be, at least the least to some of them needs to be incentive driven. Uh, I think uh, evidence around the world has suggested huge potential, uh, such a program providing work incentives uh, in helping the poor uh, while, uh, uh, you know, not create welfare dependent. Uh, EITC, as uh, Professor Gao has mentioned, this is also what I learned in graduate school and was what I teach uh, students is, uh, uh, is a classic, uh, rather successful and the largest incentive compatible program among uh, in the US and also many other OECD countries. Um, there is no such experiment we find uh, existing in developing countries that we we can we, we find those we find and uh, so um, there's many motivations. Uh, um, a key motivation is uh, if China uh, is about to launch a large scale, or which I, I believe they will do it, uh, large scale uh, transfer programs, which is much larger than current DBAO, etc. Will EITC type of program work in China? Uh, does it? So this becomes, I think, it's a, a interesting uh, policy questions, or at least uh, uh, we can we can we can try to set to to experiment before the government initiate uh, something like what we have done in the U.S. in 1960s and the 70s. Uh, the several uh, uh, social transfer programs happen uh, social transfer. Uh, experiment uh, in 19, yeah, 1960s and 70s. Um, also, uh, obviously, we, we this research may contribute to the large literature uh, study the in work uh, benefit program. Um, as I mentioned, that uh, particularly uh, we have uh, there so far there are 17 OECD countries we find have adopted similar. A program like earning income tax credit in the United States. Uh, compared with traditional welfare program, such as in minimum guarantee, uh, it is incentive compatible. And right now, uh, it is easy to implement. It's a lot cheaper to manage and with a pretty high, uh, with higher target, targeting accuracy. The US earned income tax credit program, the management cost is, is lower than 1%. So that's the advantage of this. So this is a typical uh, OIT, EITC. This is also similar to our, this actually is our, our design, part of our design. Uh, they have a face in, uh, they have a Plato and a face out. So it's a face in and a Plato and a, and a face out. So basically if you make roughly speaking a per capita in the household uh, lower than 400 RMB per month, uh, we reward you uh, at a 50% rate. And then this is about 50%, this is 50%. Uh, yeah, about a little below that, yeah, roughly roughly 50%. And then we, we then you, you have a plateau, uh, then you uh, reduce the reward. Um, so EITC work is uh, once enrolled, household have to, uh, report earnings and employment status every month in order to claim uh, their rewards. Um, so they need to report uh, supporting materials to prove employment and income. And the earnings will be reviewed and verified by a research team uh, from China Household Finance Survey in Chengdu in Southwestern University of Finance Economics. So there is a special team uh, trying to uh, are doing this. A reward will calculate roughly uh, based on previous graph. And then uh, upon the approval of the re uh, reward, uh, the, the cash transfer 
well, were deposited into individual household bank account uh, during the first week of each month. And then uh, any other changes such as their employment status, uh, their consumptions uh, and other behaviors, including some of the health status are tracked uh, based on surveys. Uh, roughly is done every two months um, to go back to this household, to the control and the experiment group. So uh, I'm going to go through quickly of this literature. There's a very large literature in economics and in sociology. I mean, many other uh, work that trying to, uh, to kind of, uh, uh, you know, to, to study the EITC type of program. Um, economics, there's many of them. Uh, some of them is using quasi-experiment, uh, such as some of the tax reforms, uh, uh, ISA and the Lieberman, et cetera. And then there's also some field experiment. Um, some of them done in, in, in Canada. Uh, there's some experiment at, uh, in Minnesota, and there's also a recent experiment in New York, uh, which you call pay, Paycheck Plus experiment uh, in New York. Uh, all these experiments uh, find a considerable effects on employment and earnings. So basically, it, it did uh, in, uh, did stimulate, uh, obviously the, the, the intensity is not, it di differs a little bit, but did has positive effect on employment earnings. So uh, let me briefly talk about this uh, design of this, of this program. So uh, this experiment uh, conducted by, as mentioned, Professor uh, Gao also mentioned that it's a, a, data, a data center uh, called China Household Finance Survey at Southwestern University of Finance and Economics, there's a particular team in this data center which specialize uh, uh, this experiment, they also conduct other experiments as well. So uh, the overall feature is roughly household on average receive 350 RMB, is about 20% of their pre-experiment monthly income. Uh, uh, this is the first, uh, for, you know, this is a large, you know, this pretty intensive, this, this intensity is pretty high, the stimulating intensity is pretty high. This is my design, I want to give them a little bit more. Um, the timeline was uh, May 2014, about six years ago, um, this uh, six, seven years ago. So we conducted a baseline survey about um, 800 household. And then among the 800 household, we, uh, we, we, we pick up those households, which has uh, obviously they have uh, the people in house, at least are, they are earning, they are able, they have ability of, of uh, labor. It, it's not just, you know, give them money, they, they can work. And then uh, we randomly select based on their, we basically calculate the probability of, of the working, uh, rank them based on the probability and uh, doing the um, uh, odd, even, odd, even, even, by that way, we selected uh, uh, 30, roughly 30 households uh, in the treatment and a control group with the 30, roughly 37 households. Um, and then we started the experiment in December uh, 2014. Um, after, let me just anecdotal uh, stories, uh, there are two households uh, after we gave the money every month for two months uh, into the bank account. Uh, the two household uh, don't believe uh, there is a, don't believe this. They, they don't know what we are trying what we are trying to do. Why do you give? Uh, why you guys give us? Uh, give the, why do we give the money? They are very suspicious. Uh, what we may uh, what we want to do, uh, so they uh, they quit. So we have twenty eight household uh, left. The two of them just quit themselves, and those are uh, always those twenty eight household and the control group they are always with us. And after about a year of experiment, uh, then we expanded the household uh, to about 100 in the treatment and uh, about 100 in the control. And uh, then two years later, uh, we have a very substantial expansion of the experiment with treatment uh, 921 and the uh, control group is uh, uh, 441. So before this time, before this, uh, the money uh, was raised 
So we we have a donation, substantial donation um, from private, uh, it's actually from a state uh, uh, owned bank and they donated money to this particular experiment and the money was running out as a local government. After this uh, uh, March 27, uh, local government took over and used their own uh, budget uh, to uh, pay, the, uh, pay the households. Um, as I said, that uh, we we rank household by, by per, per capita. In, so the, the we uh, so after the pilot, after the pilot, and talk about after the pilot, then uh, uh, be, before the October 2015 experiment, what we done is uh, uh, we 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 had a baseline survey. We compute per capita income for each household. We rank the household by per capita income. And then we do this by even odd, even or rank. So even rank groups are picked as a treatment group and odd rank them uh, as a control group. But after that, unfortunately, local government uh, uh, step in and they said, they look at the control group and they told us that the, those, you know, the low income part of this control group, they think that very, very poor. So they want us to Put them back into treatment, give them money. So we actually has a swap of the poorest control group people back into treatment, and some of the treatment group are back into control. So it's no longer uh, random uh, in, in in that sense. Treatment wise, no longer random, but we do have the data knowing who is uh, what we intend to control. So we can use intent to uh, intent to treat. We can use intent to treat as a measurement rather than actual treatment. So this is uh, something I want to mention that uh, you have to, you know, if they, the local official said they want to, to do this, uh, you, you know, all this experiment has to be uh, fully supported by the local officials. So we have to, you know, we, we have to listen to it. Anyway, so then we conducted the uh, survey uh, roughly every two months, not necessary, but roughly every two months or sometimes uh, uh, three months. So this is a survey, each of the survey uh, between uh, uh, from November 2015 to January 2017. And each survey, the, the sample size in each survey in the treatment in the control board. There's no voluntary attrition from the program. Uh, there's also uh, sometimes the, the survey because we just couldn't find them. They're not there for that day in the, in the survey. And uh, so there's no systematic a difference between those participated survey and those are particip not participated survey. Uh, this is what I said, 20% of the sample switched at the request of the local government uh, to help as many poor households as possible. Uh, so uh, we can recover the intention to treat uh, in fact by using the initial assignment as an instrument. So this is uh, something we can, we can deal with. All right, this is what we used uh, to treat this data, the first stage versus second stage. And uh, uh, it's, you know, the, there's no weak instrument problem. All right, summary uh, statistics. This is uh, overall uh, total earnings and treatment and the control. And you can see, uh, obviously, uh, total earnings. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's no difference uh, in terms of the number of employees, there's no statistic difference. Ours work. Um, this is uh, uh, overall in terms of the uh, in terms of the intention to treat. Okay. Uh, family size. Uh, there's also no statistical difference. So it's balanced. All right. Um, this is uh, treatment fact. Overall treatment fact on household labor supply. Just. Uh, uh, to show you. So you can see that the monthly uh, working hours for primary job, uh, hours of work has been uh, significantly increased by 86 hours. Monthly working hours for the second secondary job, uh, no statistic difference. And then uh, overall number of employees per household uh, increased by 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.3 percent. So three household Averagely increased by one percent. Uh, one person, and the, the pilot I mentioned that about thirty household pilot. The number is slightly larger, 
uh, with our say monthly our monthly working hours uh, increased by 105 hours, and the pilot is a uh, uh, 0.336, uh, roughly the same. So this is one result. So first of all, the first result is hours has increased, the intensive margin has increased, and also uh, the extensive margin also has increased. Um, uh, there are more people working and also uh, more working hours. And this is by month, monthly data, uh, by you know, dynamic effect. You can see that uh, in terms of the, it's pretty stable. Number of employer employed per household increased by uh, roughly 0.3 for March, May, September, November, January data is roughly, uh, there's slight, there's some variation, but not much uh, or statistically significant. And the total hours worked per month also uh, statistically significant in terms of, uh, 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 this is increased. So treatment has increased by 69 hours, 70, 78 hours, et cetera. All right, uh, earnings. So this is not obviously the, the more people work and the more working hours, uh, roughly you're gonna, they'll make 550, 560 RMB per month more for the, from their primary jobs and nothing else. Uh, the, the nothing, uh, nothing, uh, not from the secondary job, and uh, not from their running business, and not from the farming profit, etc. So basically, just the monthly earning from primary job increased by 560 RMB. And uh, uh, this is monthly earning, uh, different, you know, uh, a difference across uh, a year of a period. You can see that there's, a, a, there's some changes. Their September, 20, September 2016 is not significant. The other months are significant. Another important part is uh, we want to know uh, if they get this extra money, the extra money come from more working, more, more people working or more working hours. Um, do, they receive, do they essentially uh, what they're spent on? Uh, we we look at their spending. So uh, spending wise, you can see that total expenditure increased by 436 RMB. And we look at items, uh, basically the items significantly, uh, we look at the food out, food, uh, eat out, utility, sundries, uh, transportation, communication, clothing, et cetera, nothing else except food increased by 158, 59, and also education increased by 226. So essentially when households get this extra money, then what they spend, they spend on education uh, and they spend on food. Then we spend on food, we understand, and we just buy more food. Spend on education uh, is something a little bit positive. What do they spend on? So we look at, we opened up the education spending and we want to see what, what have they spent on. You can see that uh, in terms of time, essentially when the spring semester started, they spend a little bit more, 166. Uh, and when this four semester, mostly when the four semester started in September, the spending is 934, mostly uh, depends on the beginning of the semester. So why the beginning of the semester, it must have something to do with the age of the kids, with how much they spend, uh, maybe buying more books, or maybe they're actually going out, or they just give them extra money, give the kids extra money, etc. So we look at the kids, look at the age of the kids, look at the, uh, who are spending, uh, for how old of the kids, why they're spending this. So this is where uh, we look at the age group. So how many people, uh, we look at the, like overall, uh, there have, 138 household, household has kids and uh, um, treatment has 78 and the uh, control group has uh, 60 among this treatment control group. You can see that um, between uh, this age, how many people uh, overall it's, uh, it's at, should be at to 100. So uh, about 20% their kids are, uh, their kids are, is elementary and uh, 
nine uh, percent is junior high, and the twenty percent is a fifteen is a senior high, and the thirty four percent are college, and these are somewhat different. The college uh, treatment just happened to be the case that there's slightly more people than the control, but the, at twelve percent, so the difference is not that large. It's statistically, um, I would say, marginal, or maybe not significant, or maybe marginal significant. All right, so we divide the household into household with child between age and age 20, 18 and 22, and other households uh, which are, you know, West, they are uh, smaller, uh, younger kids' household. You can see that mostly happened is uh, those, uh, those households with, uh, with uh, you know, relatively older kids, they may go to college or they may go to some kind of, they may go out. Uh, not living, not necessarily living with their family, not necessarily well living with the family. Um, you can see that most money happened to that. They just give them more money. When they have extra money, uh, they're living for, for, the, for the semester. Uh, so just family just have extra money and they give the money to the kid. I, this is what we, we think. And it seems like other, other things, there's a little bit change, a little bit different. Uh, the, the, there's still some in the, in the, in the spring semester. It's 500 of them, but mostly there's not significant, but you can see the magnitude is pretty substantial. It's a 50, 1,500 of them. Give them uh, 1,500 of them more. It, I, I, this number uh, to me makes a lot of sense. Uh, that's what the families are, are doing. All right, we also have some health outcomes. This is what we ask them to the experience, discomfort, fever, pain, diarrhea, a cough, and a uh, uh, palpitation. So you can see that lower means better. You can see that there's a little bit lower discomfort and uh, uh, happen less of this uh, palpitation. So uh, there's some health benefit of this. We don't know, we don't have a nutrition data. So we don't know is it because of a better nutrition. We, we know they spend more on food or because of what? We don't, we quite, we don't quite know that of that. So those results are, uh, should be taken as a um, should be, we, you know, we're cautious about uh, this result, but we do see uh, some of the health outcomes. Um, then we kind of to look at, so what's been going on? So we want to go a little bit more uh, detail about uh, what they're doing, how they change the working hours, who they are, what, what in particular, what the, what's the detail uh, of their doing. So, um, typically, uh, workers may not be able to choose continuous hours of work. And uh, in many of the studies, so in this particular experiment, uh, there's a very different distinguishing of types of work. And if you are, typically we have, we have if you, you can self-employed or you can work for others. So if you have an employed job, employed jobs, uh, uh, makes twice as much as uh, self-employed jobs. So let me describe the area is actually a, a suburban area. It's a uh, it's pretty poor, and uh, but it's urban area. Uh, we've been there many times. So you can self-employ. Typically, you just have a store. You have a you have a shop uh, on the street. Uh, it's pretty low intensity, uh, but long working hours and not making much. But if you work for somebody else, then you make uh, a little bit, you make 13 or 1400 per month. If you self-employed, you make about 600 uh, per month. Um, if you, um, for those who already working, uh, if you want to get more earnings to get this reward is to switch to a better uh, paid job. So we expect to see, uh, essentially we see people changing from different type of jobs uh, you know, the, that's what we would expect. So expect to see the difference in terms of the switching behavior between treatment and, and the control groups. So that's what uh, we see. You can see this, this is the unconditional. So regardless of, uh, of previous what they have, there's about 9% people out of the unemployed. So they didn't work, uh, they, are, they switched to work, 
Uh, so about uh, 10 percent of the point nine, you know, 10 percent of them, 9.6 percent of them, switch from uh, not working to working, and then from working, uh, about half of them, a little bit more than half of them, switch to employed, and half of them switch to uh, self-employed. So that's the overall pattern. So we we want to go go a little bit more detail. There's a very different about families with one earners versus two earners. That's where lots of actions happen. So we noticed that uh, um, uh, there is some in the control group uh, they lost their self-employed jobs due to the uh, during the experiment period. And the phenomenon is largely due to. Uh, let me go to this uh, next slide to to kind of describe this. <clears throat> to describe some, a little bit more detail. So families with due earners, mom and dad, um, they generally earn more and uh, uh, you know, they have kids to take care. So if uh, typically in these families, uh, individuals, uh, if, if the employed, uh, so they, we know that they make quite a bit. Have, so what happened would be for due earners, one would be employed, uh, one would be self-employed. Individuals self-employed earned significantly less, but have higher working hours. Um, a typical a dual earner household, uh, typically they have a primary earner who has uh, employed jobs and secondary earner who have uh, self-employed jobs. They, but they, what they do is basically take care of their kids in the same time has a job, uh, have a store or have a, uh, you know, just have, have a shop on the street and doing, you know, doing a little bit of work uh, manage their kids and, uh, and the shop together. And uh, this job, because of the self-employed jobs, uh, don't make much. Uh, uh, yeah, this is a take care of children. So th these jobs are easy to quit and to quit occasionally. So what we believe is that the incentives, our incentives given to them prevents them from doing uh, or, or encourage them keep working, keep doing this uh, job rather than you know, quitting or coming back, rather than just, uh, this is what we believe uh, happened. So this is what uh, uh, you can see. Um, this is a dual earner household versus uh, uh, long earner household. You can see that uh, uh, treatment in fact, monthly earnings uh, and the monthly, monthly earnings for dual earners, treatment in fact is uh, working hours the increase uh, quite a bit, just because uh, uh, previously they may not work or they might they quit the work, occasionally don't work uh, compared with, uh, uh, you know, in the control group, uh, there's no incentive then. So mo lots of actions happening here. So monthly working hours for, it's happened to due earners. And also monthly earnings also happen to them as well. You can see the uh, uh, non due earner household, single earner household, uh, the changes are very little. Um, their hours change are insignificant. Monthly earning has changed because some of them may switch to a better paid jobs. And, and uh, so that's the difference is, is substantial. So one, one is a 900 uh, uh, RMB uh, monthly additional earnings, uh, one is 400. All right. Um, so there's another, another one we want to kind of uh, show that is because uh, I mentioned that there's a face in, there's a plateau, there is a face out. We want to see that obviously face in period is you make more, you earn more. So that's the strong incentive part. Plateau, uh, if everything is people respond completely at the margin, uh, then at the plateau, they should have no expect. And then face out, if they complete worker margin, they should decrease their uh, their their effort, or they don't have you know, because when they make more, they actually get less. So there's a disincentive at face out. This is what I'm saying. This is this part is face in. This part is flat. This part is a face out. So we should expect higher effect in face in, no effect uh, in plateau, and uh, uh, it may be left, maybe negative effect on um, face out. It turns out the result is not like that. And we're gonna see what, we're gonna show you why. 
So obviously, phasing originally originally in phasing period, you can see uh, uh, the effect is lower. Either monthly earnings, uh, monthly working hours, monthly earnings and expenditure is low, and highest happen to be actually at the phase out period at this period. And the plateau also has a pretty strong effect. They cannot individuals household really cannot optimize. They don't, you know, it's not they are they can they can. We, there's no way they, they can do this to, to at such a fine incentive driven period. I think the whole thing is uh, when, you, when you have the incentive, they just, they just understand the yes or no part, really not truly care or understand that the, the fine tune of this uh, experiment. So, and we want to see, to, we want to kind of uh, look at this. Uh, in the length of the uh, 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 in the in the length of the uh, dual earners, no earners, and the, and the single earner of the household, so you can see that uh, this is what we look at. So for the low earners, most of them actually at face in. So thirty seven of, of them, ninety seven percent of ninety seven percent of those no earner household is at face in pure because they're poor, and dual earners. Uh, there are 26.4 of them at the phase out period. They are actually at this period, most at this period. So we know that uh, lots of action happen uh, for dual earner families. Uh, there are some, some actions and single earners, but most lots of action happened uh, in, the, in the dual earner families. And because of that, you can see that, uh, that uh, they, they, they are, they don't, they, they make a lot. Uh, they actually have ability to increase the hours, but they don't necessarily get uh, the best benefit, the maximum benefit. So uh, this is uh, uh, a, a message of this is, uh, you know, the whole thing is a good thing to encourage them working, not necessarily uh, the, the fine tune of the, how much money they get. They're not doing that much of a calculation. All right. So let me summarize of this experiment of the results. And um, from both the pilot experiment, a 100 RMB reward, this talk of margin effect, increased uh, employed household, employed, number of employed per household, this is extended margin by 0.1, and household monthly working hours by 23, and uh, household monthly earnings by 163, and the 124 uh, households uh, in terms of the consumption, uh, among which are 54 on food and 70 on child education. So this study compared with other studies, which again, in the literature, roughly, uh, I think what happened is, uh, uh, this is our, our, we, we have a largest in terms of intensity. We basically uh, stimulate them. We, we pay them 21% on average of their pre-experiment Money, so that's pretty substantial, and uh, obviously that has largest uh, employment effect on average, getting fourteen percent. In fact, but elasticity is right in the middle, it's 0 0.66. So uh, there's some other study uh, pays less, some other study pays uh, pays a little bit more, and uh, so we have a strong intensive. Uh, this is so. Um, as I mentioned that, um, so. The local government liked this program a lot. They really liked the program. So uh, in March uh, 2017, they took it over. Uh, they used their uh, budget to fund this program. I mentioned the origin was funded by a donation. And then for those houses, there are more than a thousand people, more than a thousand household, which has this, this program. Among that, you can see that, uh, so every, Participant household, participant household, uh, they have a plaque in front of the door, which I, they're very happy. I talked to many, quite many of them. They're extremely proud to have this in front of the door, and they are very happy to be. Uh, this is called a negative, negative income tax experiment household, negative income tax. And they are indeed a negative income tax. So uh, this is actually a local official, one of the local officials. Uh, he he listened to my talk and he, he, this is, he gave this talk. He, uh, 
I, I mentioned that this is a, a broader experiment for negative income tax in China, uh, which I will, I will spend a few minutes uh, to talk about it. Uh, but so he liked the idea. So he just put this plaque. He, he made the plaque himself. He put the plaque in front of the door of this, uh, each of the household. It's quite, it's quite exciting. It's still there. Um, so, um, so the experiment was quite, was quite successful. Then we get lots of, so lots of local uh, government in China, in Sichuan particularly, uh, has uh, participated. They came to us and uh, um, now they use their own budget. And so we have seen about 70,000 70, households in Sichuan. Right now, then Yunnan also has started too. So they have 70,000 households are in different stage of getting paid by work. Obviously, there's a huge heterogeneity among those uh, places. Uh, the place where I talk about is uh, uh, more urban than rural. Many other places are rural and uh, a complete rural, or and uh, they have a different minority group, a different uh, different production process, different farming uh, conditions, etc. So my team has been uh, working with each of which we use this local government, providing them. Uh, design, providing training, and uh, we also have some software, uh, IT process we, we developed that they can use. Uh, so has been uh, uh, lots of lots of data have been collected. Uh, many of the experiment, many of the things have done are not completely random. They can they can be if they are they can be random by village, different villages or towns. Some of them uh, they uh, but not necessary or they just do it everywhere. Not, not doing this uh, in terms of the, uh, what we want this to be experiment. But there's lots of lots of data we have collected and we are, we're trying to analyze this. So finally, I want to mention, I want to spend a few minutes to talk about, this is the, a, a broad, uh, um, the broad story I, which has been talking over the last quite many years in China uh, has, uh, which I, mean, I, I believe has a, the chances here the experiment uh, that China may start soon, a very large scale uh, transfer program. Let me talk about this. So in China, you have to uh, talk about not only just the anti-poverty side, anti-poverty uh, is great, is government pays a lot of attention to that. But uh, in many ways, if you want to expand this whole transfer program, you have to talk in, in, in aggregate term, in, 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 in saving, in consumption, and also in economic growth. Uh, this is what I've been trying to say that China has a very, everybody knows that China has very high household savings, um, way higher than the rest of the world, way higher than, than uh, any other countries. Uh, so the question of the high, high saving rate is not everybody saves. This is a uh, saving rate by percentile. You can see the poor actually, uh, they don't save. Uh, they actually have liquidity constraint. So I believe, and my study have shown, this is the big part of the high saving rate. So poor household uh, actually has a, a higher propensity to consume, but they don't have money to consume. They like to consume, don't have money to consume. Rich, the, the propensity to consume is low and they have lots of money. So high saving rate is mostly saved by the rich. Uh, all countries are like that. China is pretty extreme. Uh, this is something uh, to do it. So this is what I say, the Gini coefficient. This is uh, not my day, Gini coefficient, but this is a National Bureau of Statistics. You can see the marginal propensity to consume changes uh, very dramatically from the poor and to the, to the rich. For the highest 20%, uh, one transfer to them, uh, they only consume five cents. Um, increasing the transfers uh, not only can reduce the power, uh, 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 poverty, um, but also can uh, increase the consumption. This is consumption ratio. Uh, GDP is highly correlated. It's, it's you know, clearly correlated, and it's, uh, it's there's there's something. It's this is pretty standard. This is what China. I want to mention this. So I, I give a data early on, but now I give a little more data. This is comparable data. Is uh, um, so China's OECD countries. This is OECD countries. This is including everything including the social security and including medical insurance, OECD countries spend about 20% of GDP on average. Some of them spend even 30%, but China spent 8%, 8.8%. They're including social security. 
including medical, uh, medical, uh, social, medical, medical spending. So excluding Social Security, China spends 3%, uh, OECD spend um, 12%. So China is way, way low than the rest of the world, than many of the uh, developing, the, many of the countries. And this is where, where the, so if, uh, if we do the cash transfer, this is what I mentioned, uh, 0.3, 0. 0.4%, US is 3%. This is what the, everything included in China, everything included. And uh, uh, where the money goes, you probably know, but th there is a dramatic photo, a dramatic picture. This is where money goes. Oh, this is China. So, so China spent on infrastructures. This is only for three, the railways, highways, and airport. China spent about 6% of the GDP. And this is 2017, and, and right now it's probably going this, going this trend. So China has choose a very different growth path from the rest of the world. And uh, nobody has, you know, they spend money on infrastructure. And there's quite a bit of a uh, right now study to say the marginal uh, benefit of uh, infrastructure, further infrastructure spending in China uh, is getting lower, is, is diminishing. And the US, US, US probably should need to spend more. I think we expect the new government, new Biden government uh, maybe you'll spend more infrastructures, but this is where China's money goes. Um, um, so what I'm trying to say that is uh, 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 there's a historical uh, opportunity. This historical opportunity uh, actually has become uh, much is strengthened by the pandemic. I'm showing the data. This is what my new new survey shows that subsidy from the government. So government actually recognizes. Uh, so, if anything, uh, in terms of the what government's mindset, uh, I would say the COVID-19 has made the large-scale subsidy a lot more popular in China uh, because uh, they're trying, they're trying very hard. You can see this is data from um, families earning incomes less than 30,000. Uh, government has tried in the current system that the increase the coverage rate, this is April data is 9% among those people are covered, they get subsidized from government. Uh, in September, uh, it, it increased to 20%, from 9% to 20%. The monthly payment per household from 400 uh, increased to 500 to 60, $86. So for those government can find, they, they do this because they have the DBO, they have unemployment insurance system. Then in the current system, they actually do uh, try very hard to increase the payment, increase the transfers to those uh, poor household. So the, the complaint is they don't know where to find other households. For example, those self-employed, they don't know how to find that. They don't know how to, how to pay them in a direct uh, cost effect efficient way. So that's what I'm suggesting. Uh, the infrastructure of paying the Chinese household is already there. For this is, uh, this is China has this, uh, we're paying tax right now in the US, we're paying the income, personal income tax, but China has this income tax APP. This APP, uh, anybody who work in China make 60,000 or more will, uh, 60,000 RMB or more will install and have this APP installed in their computer, uh, in, their, in, their, in, their, in their cell phone, in their uh, smartphones. And uh, this is very efficient, it's very efficient way of connecting individuals with government. I think through the personal APP, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy that the Chinese government can uh, uh, start uh, uh, you know, gradually, obviously, uh, large scale transfers, which can help reduce the uh, saving rate, increase consumption, um, and also reduce the poverty. Uh, if we do that in an incentive compatible way, like we just we experimented, I would say uh, it's, Pretty amazing. It's a pretty uh, big achievement. So anyway, I'm going to stop here uh, for questions. Thank you so much, Professor Gan. This is uh, fascinating, and uh, I learned a lot. I agree with you. It's an uh, uh, amazing moment in history for both uh, the US and China. I think both governments want to revive the economy and boost people's earnings and work efforts. Um, so this is uh, very timely. Uh, I welcome our audience members. If you have a question or comment, 
your question should go into the Q&A box. If you have a comment or reflection, please enter it into the chat box. Um, I would start with a question of my own, um, which is when you designed the experiment, when you picked people who you were going to assign into the treatment and control groups, uh, I think you said you chose based on their workability, right? Work so, ability. Yeah, their pilot, we do the pilot. We want this to work. So we basically, among the, the 800 households we surveyed, we pick up those people with uh, uh, household, at least with somebody who can work. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we get rid of those people who are disabled, who cannot work because we cannot incentivize them. And then we calculate the probability of working. Uh, then we rank the probability. We took the terms, yeah, the odd, mm -hmm. uh, odd and even terms in, to to choose the experiment versus treatment. I see. Um, Did you so do that's the how same we for the follow up. The other follow up we actually rank by income, by earning. So in the follow up we rank by. So you can see a slightly difference in terms of the intensity, the stimul, the, the effect. The effect for pilot is slightly larger. Yeah. The later, yeah. the later uh, data. Yeah, it is fascinating because I also look at how debout receipt affects families' consumption. In yeah. your results, the major consumption categories that got a boost was education and food, yeah. which I also see in my research. But oh. another category we saw, yes, related to debout receipt was health expenditures. So many of the debout recipients had health challenges, medical care expenses, which they prioritized. Uh, to spend on, but because I think the way you chose your sample, at least in the baseline, in the first cohort, yeah, maybe your so your participants who are not healthy. They may not. They complete in dependent debout. So make sure this is a we are supplement to debout. Those people get debout, mm -hmm. still yeah. get debout. We're not we're not replacing the debout. Uh, yeah. This is the uh, uh, so so household here are healthier because. Uh, you you are you cannot work you are you you are not healthy. We do not include in the household, in in the sample, mm -hmm. either both in control and or for the experiment. Not, those are not included. Yes. Because we want yes. to work. We want to see this uh, stimulating on, on work effort, right? So, yeah. if you cannot, right. no matter how much you give to you, you cannot work. That, that's that defeats the purpose. Yes. Yes. Um, the other question I have is um, whether, I mean, to understand these people more, you talked about how there are some variations among the people who got the treatment, right? Yeah. Whether they have yeah. children, what kind of children, age, school enrollment. In the US, there is a literature on the EITC that is done quantitatively that supplements the quantitative evidence. Mm -hmm. So researchers, mostly sociologists, have talked to EITC beneficiaries to see yeah. how they use the money and the seasonality of the use of the money. Mm -hmm. I wonder if in China you can do the same to understand their consumption choices and constraints uh, from more a uh, life experience perspective. So we have you mean the cases we already we have quite many cases we actually have uh, have videos mm. uh, we tape them we interview them tape them have videos and some of the videos are pretty well, are somewhat uh, you know some of the participants are kind of stars you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty this this experiment is pretty well known uh, in China and among media too so there's many many media have talked to them and uh, to the to some of the so we do have uh, stories yeah lots of stories about uh, what what they're using what they do what they did yeah so that's fascinating yeah. I, I know in the US uh, as you mentioned your literature weaved the economics and sociology literature yeah. I wonder in China whether this could be a future direction for um, scholars who not only study this experiment from economics perspective but also sociology or other perspectives such as social work i i would say well like social work most of the people who help us are social mm -hmm. workers yeah so local officials who help us uh, are social workers they are 
uh, you know, community workers, uh, social workers. Uh, there are some of them we have WeChat, uh, have yeah. WeChat link with them. They, they sometimes ask me to, uh, you know, if they have something, I just give them a thumbs up. Yeah. 